Welcome to Lesson 5 of the Memory section, Research Studies into the Working Memory Model. My name is Nick Redshaw and I have over 16 years experience of teaching A-level psychology. I'm also co-author of the highly successful independent learner series of student workbooks available exclusively on Amazon. So Research Studies into the Working Memory Model, Hunt, 1980, Study to Investigate Limited Capacity of the Central Executive. The aim, to investigate evidence for a limited capacity central executive. Procedure, a lab experiment using a repeated measures design. Participants performed a psychomotor task that involved gliding a lever between two posts using only the thumb and index finger and completing a spatial intelligence test at the same time. Results, Hunt found that as the spatial intelligence test became more difficult, performance on the psychomotor task decreased. Conclusions. Hunt concluded that both tasks involved the use of the central executive to allocate attention, but due to its limited capacity, it is unable to maintain performance on both. If the slave system worked independently of the central executive, there would be no reduction in performance. Evaluation. Strengths. This was a lab experiment with high levels of control, so it was possible to repeat the study easily, improving its reliability. The research findings support Badley and Hitch's earlier findings that the central executive acts as a control centre allocating tasks to the slave systems and has a limited capacity. Limitations. The research lacks ecological validity as the two concurrent tasks performed in the test are unlikely to take place together in everyday life. Hunt concluded that it was the limited capacity of the central executive that led to the decrease in performance, but it could have been due to the limited capacity of the visual spatial sketch pad. Sir so Hunt may have over-exaggerated the role of the central executive in his research. Further studies carried out by Badley and Hitch in 1974 into dual task performance demonstrated that when two verbal tasks or two visual based tasks are performed at the same time concurrently, performance is much slower than when the tasks are performed independently. Therefore, the limited capacity and duration of the subsystems cannot cope with the two concurrent tasks. However, when Badley et al. 1973 asked participants to perform a visual task coupled with a verbal task which used two separate subsystems, performance was generally not affected, overall providing evidence for the different components within the working memory model. Clinical case studies investigated by Shallis and Warrington in 1974 also provides further support of the working memory model. That short-term memory is subdivided into two different structures. They found a patient they had, they had studied two years earlier who had damage to their short-term memory, only had problems with verbally presenting information and not with visual information, therefore supports the existence of separate visual and auditory stores. However, there are obvious problems with drawing conclusions from such individual cases. I'd now like you to complete this task. If you're using one of our workbooks or if your teacher has downloaded our workbook from TESS, please complete this in your workbook. If not, complete it on a piece of paper. In an experiment to investigate the working memory model, one group of participants were asked to carry out two visual tasks concurrently. The other group of participants were asked to carry out a visual task and a verbal task at the same time. The results showed that the participants who carried out two visual tasks at the same time performed less well on the tasks than participants who carried out a visual task and a verbal task at the same time. Use your knowledge of the working memory model to explain this finding. On the slide it says one mark, but actually it's four marks. So if you'd like to pause the video at this point and complete the task. Okay, welcome back. So, this is four marks of AO2. You're applying your knowledge to the scenario and in this case the knowledge of the working memory model to the scenario. Possible answer, research carried out by Badley and Hitch 1974 into dual task performance demonstrated that two verbal or two visual based tasks are performed at the same time. Concurrent performance is much slower than when the tasks are performed independently using different processing systems, verbal and visual. This is because the limited capacity and duration of the slave systems the visual spatial sketch pad and the articulatory loop cannot cope with the two concurrent tasks. 
However, when Badley et al. 1973 asked participants to perform a visual task coupled with a verbal task, which uses two separate slave systems, performance was generally not affected. Overall, providing evidence for the different components within the working memory model. Okay, moving on. The phonological store deals with visually coded information. True or false? The phonological store deals with visually coded information. True or false? Hopefully here, you've said false. Okay, looking at the diagram. The diagram below outlines the four different components of the working memory model, which the name of each component, write the name of each component in the appropriate box. Okay, again, you may want to pause the video at this point in order to answer the question. Okay, welcome back. So what have you got for this one? Well, the oval, you should have the central executive. This one? Well, hopefully you've written here, phonological loop. But if you've written visual spatial sketch pad, that's okay. And over here, visual spatial sketch pad. But if you've got it the other way around, again, that's okay. And this one, the episodic buffer. So the oval, central executive, two slave systems, either the phonological loop or the visual spatial sketch pad. And the episodic buffer. A classic exam style question. Okay, moving on. Just bear with me. I'd, like, I'd now like you to complete the following question. Outline one advantage and one disadvantage of the experimental design used by Hunt in 1980. Outline one advantage and one disadvantage of the experimental design used by Hunt. This is for four marks. I'll give you a hint, experimental design is not experimental method. What you're looking at here is either whether it was an independent group design, a repeated measures design, a matched participant design, and the strengths and weaknesses of that design. Okay then, welcome back. So. Going back to the study, Hunt. Hunt used a repeated measures design. There it is, look, repeated measures design. So let's go back. So, strengths and weaknesses of the repeated measures design. So this is four marks of AO3. Advantages. As the same participants are used in each condition, the effects of individual differences are controlled. So any changes in the DV, the performance on the psychomotor task, is due to the IV, i.e. the degree of difficulty of the spatial intelligence test. Or you could have fewer participants are needed to conduct the experiment for one mark. Tricky to get the second mark, but credit any relevant information here. Disadvantage. The second condition can be affected by order effects such as practice effect fatigue or boredom. Okay, evaluation of the uh, working memory model. In order to evaluate the working memory model, we're going to consider the review mnemonic. Using emoticons below, identify whether the following evaluation points are supporting or challenging the working memory model. So let's look at the first one. Reliability. There is a great deal of lab-based research supporting the components of the model. So is that happy or sad? Well, I hope we all agree. I mean, that's a happy face. So, everyday life. 
it makes sense that different types of information should be processed by different systems and can account for real life activities such as reading, phonological loop, problem solving, central executive, navigation and visual spatial sketchpad. Verbal tasks include learning, repeating words, speaking and reading. Visual tasks include forming an image of something and answering questions about it mentally. Again, happy faces. So if you carry on, if you just take a little time and complete this, if you're using one of our workbooks, obviously complete this in the workbook. Okay, and moving on. Briefly explain which tasks are appropriate for the two different subsystems in the working memory model. Briefly explain which tasks are appropriate for the two different subsystems in the working memory model. So you may want to pause the video. Okay, and welcome back. So here you've got three marks. So, three marks for a clear explanation of the task and naming of the appropriate sub-slave system. For example, verbal tasks for the articulatory loop and visual tasks for the visual spatial sketchpad. A brain scan shows that one area of the brain is more active when a person is doing a verbal task. However, when this person is doing a visual task, a different area of the brain is more act active. Give an example of an appropriate verbal task an appropriate visual task which could be used during the brain scan. So here, verbal task, you might have verbal reasoning, comprehension, reading, and visual task, any, anything visual or spatial. Okay, so finally we come to the homework independent task. And as I always say here, I mean, it is worth doing these. A lot of students don't, they, they take the lazy option of not really sort of doing the 12 markers and the 12 markers are very, 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 very important when it comes to the exams. So describe and evaluate the working memory model. You may want to pause the video at this point and have a go at this, it should take you around about 12 minutes, 15 minutes, or come back at a later date having completed the working memory model, describe and evaluate. You've got here, six marks of AO1 and six marks of AO3. AO1, demonstrate knowledge and understanding of scientific ideas. AO3, analyze and interpret and evaluate scientific information. Okay then, so you may want to pause the video. Okay, welcome back. So, whether you're doing the full A level, which this question would be worth 16 marks, or whether you're doing the 12 marks, I don't anticipate a great deal of difference between the actual two questions. So for 16 marks, knowledge of the components and functions of the working memory model is accurate and generally well detailed. Your discussion should be thorough and effective. Your answer should be clear and coherent. You should use specialist terminology effectively. So AO1, possible content. So you get up to six marks for knowledge of the components and functions of the working memory model here. So research since Atkins and, Sh and Schifrin's early work into models of memory has found that short-term memory is subdivided into two different structures and rather than being passive is an active processor. From this, Badley and Hitch, 1974, proposed the working memory model. So you need to include description of the different components, including information concerning capacity and coding of each store. The central executive control system, which allocates tasks by switching attention between the three subsystems. It has limited capacity and duration, but can process information that has been coded through any sensory modality. The phonological loop, as we discussed earlier, deals with auditory sound and verbal information in a speech-based form and can hold limited amounts of information for a short time. The phonological loop is subdivided into the phonological store, the inner ear. It stores acoustically coded information from brief periods. The articulatory control process, the inner voice. The subvocal repetition process that silent repeats words to prevent them decaying and has a limited capacity of three to four items. 
The Visual Spatial Sketchpad deals with a limited number, three to four objects of visual spatially coded information for a short period of time. The Visual Spatial Sketchpad is subdivided into Visual Cache, a passive temporary store for visual data, coding objects and features such as shape and color. The Inner Scribe, a spatial component that deals with location and movements of objects in your field of vision. The Episodic Buffer, a limited capacity store that links visual, auditory and spatial information, placing them into chronological order and a sequence for a brief period of time. It acts as the storage component for the central executive and a link between short-term and long-term memory. Different versions may include primary acoustic store. Note, not all of the slave systems need to be present for full max. However, having said that, in the past, examiners have been quite strict on this area. Therefore, overkill is probably the best rule of thumb. I would include them all. You can give a fully labeled diagram, but again, I would suggest you sort of include detail of each store, including obviously the capacity encoding elements that we've already discussed. So, AO3, for evaluation. You need to include evaluation of the working memory, memory in terms of strengths and weaknesses. Strengths include, explains how the cognitive processes interact, memory is active rather than passive, provides explanation of treatments for processing deficits, highlight different memory tasks that short-term memory could deal with by identifying separate components, explain results of dual task studies, limitations include vague, untestable nature of the central executive, supported by high control lab studies, evaluation for this is appropriate so far as it highlights that there are that they may undermine the validity of the model. Use of evidence to support and refute the model. We've, we've included Hunt, so Hunt would be a good study to include here. Uh, study to investigate limited capacity, central executive. Further studies carried out by Badley and Hitch into dual task performance, support the limited capacity and duration of the subsystems. Clinical case studies investigated by Shalins and Warrington also provides further support for the working memory model. Brava et al. 1997, research into the role of the central executive. That brings us to the end of this lesson, and hopefully I'll see you in the next lesson.